would bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever to the age of ages. Amen. Today, as we just read, is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 10, which is the fourth and the last Sunday of the Blessed Month of the Tour, in which we're gearing up for the Feast of the Nativity. Next week, God willing, we start the Blessed Month of Kiak, and this whole month is geared towards, you want to remember, we focus on The Incarnation, St. Mary, that's a little bit later. Um, we see we will follow the four Sundays of um, in the Blessed Month of Kiak in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 1, starting next week. Um, but before we get to that part in the events that, that um, precede the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, we focus more on, well, who did he come to and what we need to do when, when he comes to us or how the heart prepares itself to receive God, the Logos, the Word of God. <clears throat> um, so that's basically what the theme of, of this month is. <clears throat> and uh, today, the Lord found in this young man's heart, um, probably which is similar to the parable that we read um, a couple weeks back and three weeks back about the thorny ground, um, as the Lord describes. Now he received the seed among the thorns, is he who hears the word and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becomes unfruitful. So this is probably um, the, the main issue as we see in, in the gospel of today. <clears throat> so kind of take a little bit, um, I don't want to call it a parable, but a story similar to, to the story of today. So imagine yourself as a young successful student who runs up to the professor and says, what do I need to do to get an A-plus in the class, right? <clears throat> and um, well, the professor says, do your homework, attend the class, study, listen to every word that I say, um, and follow whatever I do, at least in terms of the, the class, not outside. Um, <clears throat> and then you respond, say, yes, I've done everything that you have said. Um, uh, as best as I can. I think I deserve to pass. Um, <clears throat> but then he says, yes, and I'm proud of you for that, but you're not there yet. I'm a professor. I'm an expert. I know what it takes. I know the subject inside and out. You, you, you lack one, two, three. Um, <clears throat> and instead of learning those things, you say, I quit this class. I'm not going to uh, sit for the exam. I'm not going to... Um, learn any more about the subject because you said this to me, right? <clears throat> um, this is kind of what transpired here today. And sometimes when, when we do our best as Christians and we look to God, we want his approval and he loves us. What was the main response before the Lord rebuked him for his weakness? It said he looked at him and what? Loved him. It's very good. He was very, he was proud of what he did, but when God loves us, he wants us to be better. He wants us to be more like him. He doesn't just want to reward us um, to, to the point of us feeling that we are good enough. Um, yes, we are good enough or worthy in his sight that he came down and took flesh and saved us um, <clears throat> and opened up paradise for us um, to enter. But he doesn't allow everyone to enter, only those who respond appropriately. <clears throat> and so um, this is what God's will is for us. He wants us to be perfect like him. He doesn't see like we see. He sees more, right? And he, he knows everything. Nothing is beyond his uh, understanding. Um, but we are limited. <clears throat> and so he goes into the depth of the heart that he had created, um, and he hears every prayer, and he knows every thought, and even the things that we don't speak, um, and he discerns every thought and feeling and, and, and emotion and desire, whether good or bad. <clears throat> and so we might think that ourselves are good and wise and spiritual and holy and stand-up Christian, but no one is perfect, and there's always something that we could do better. Um, so the man of today, he, he thought that he followed all the commandments to the T, but it was obvious that he had a lot of things lacking. Because if, if he was truly 100% perfect or faithful, then he would have taken 
what was told of him and improve more and stayed with the Lord more rather than leave um, sorrowful. <clears throat> um, and so um, sometimes we go to the Lord in the state saying, look what I did. And instead we hear a rebuke or we get a correction. Um, and this is a good thing, not a bad thing. Um, we need to realize that we're, we're not there yet or else God would have probably taken us already to be with him. Um, so we need the Lord to tell us what we are lacking. Um, we might not be pleased with what we hear, but it's the truth. And we need to look at ourselves as honestly as possible if we want to make it to paradise, to pass the final exam with flying colors, and to become uh, saints with the fellow saints in the kingdom of heaven. <clears throat> so the main question we have to ask ourselves today is, uh, is what do I lack? Um, and we start with one thing. And we work on it, and we repent about it, and we fast and pray regarding it. And we try to make a change with the grace of God for this. Um, because for this young man, it was his money and his possessions. Um, others, it might be something else. Um, <clears throat> and um, so God is asking us, do you know what is the, the main thing that you lack or not? And if we repent and confess in the proper way, we know we can just take a look at what you've repented in the past and you'll see a pattern. And that pattern will most likely be related to that one thing. If there's 10 or 20 things, that's understandable. But the idea here is we focus on the one thing first um, or probably the biggest thing. And we work on it with all of our effort by the grace of God in order to tra transform us. <clears throat> and sometimes there are certain verses in scripture that encourage us to recognize these things. Um, uh, for example, St. Peter has a list in his second epistle. Um, <clears throat> this might help for the person who doesn't know, right? So um, St. Peter said, writes, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness yet denying its power. So when we look at these lists, we should say, okay, which one am I gravitating more towards in my heart and which one do I need to focus on? This shouldn't discourage us, but encourage us to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. <clears throat> And so um, God knows very well what that thing is. So we ask him, okay, reveal this to me and give me the strength to, to overcome. <clears throat> um, take time to sit with him so he can whisper to you what that one thing is that we lack. And ask him to give you the power to respond positively, not get discouraged and leave him sorrowful. <clears throat> of course, the sorrow, uh, the godly sorrow is good, like St. Paul says. But the sorrow that this man experienced was not godly because he left Christ, um, and we don't know what happened after this. Um, <clears throat> so we need to detach and disconnect from the worldly things in order to connect to, to, with our Heavenly Father and the heavenly things. And the true heart is revealed um, not only with what we say, because he came and he said everything perfectly. He called him good teacher, but then said, wait a second, are you sure I'm good? Because um, there's only one person that's good, and that is God. And, and he's... There's a lot of commentary on the fathers on, on what he means by this. Of course, Jesus Christ is one with God the Father, but maybe this man did not recognize that he was the Son of God in, in truth. Um, <clears throat> and uh, he thought he did a great job. And he probably did a good job, but it was not great enough. Um, and that's why we, we need to always remind ourselves, because then... Um, if, if we don't, we could be increasing um, our, our, our weaknesses rather than um, exposing them and allowing God to remove them from us. Um, <clears throat> so although we don't have the opportunity, most likely, to have a similar face-to-face -face conversation with the Lord Jesus Christ, each one of us has different circumstances in our life that God has arranged that helps to reveal to us what is it that we are lacking or where our heart is? And so when we sit with ourselves and we evaluate, then, then we begin to, God 
speaks to us and, and reveals to us um, in a spirit of humility and, and uh, reverence, we're able to recognize what God is trying to speak to us. Um, <clears throat> so God wants the entire heart, not just a piece of us, piece of it. Um, the sacrifice here is not partial, but it is holistic. It's kind of like, uh, um, you know, back in the day when, when they used to collect donations in the church, they wouldn't put the box, but they would, unfortunately, uh, they would bring like a little bag around, right? Um, or sometimes a tray, even not in the Orthodox churches, even in addition to many of the Christian churches. So one time there was a young boy who, uh, who said, who heard the sermon and he was convicted. And he said, um, okay, can you put the tray a little lower for me? And they thought he couldn't reach it. So no, low, lower. So, so the, the gentleman put it all the way to the ground and he stepped inside of it <laughs> because he thought, this is, this is the idea that I need. I need to give my whole self to God, not just a piece, not just a few minutes, not just a few dollars. That, that's not the concept. The concept is to give our entire self and to consecrate ourselves wholly to God. And we live our, the rest of our life in the fear of God. Um, yes, we do worldly things, but we're not part of the world. Our heart is not attached to the world, it's attached to God. <clears throat> so that's the concept that the Lord, I think, is trying to speak to us today about. Um, and no matter what we have attained, because the Lord is saying, don't trust in the riches, um, trust in the one who is rich and gives these riches. Um, we are graciously given many blessings from the Lord, but we shouldn't trust in them. Like St. Mercurius of the Sufin of, of today, he was granted strength and wisdom and power and successfulness in, in his life. But God sent him many messages saying, no, this sword is powerful, but I, I give you, I gave that one to you, but I'm going to give you another one to remind you that the strength comes from God and not from man. Right, <clears throat> as um, the psalm of today says, know that the Lord, He is God. He has made us, and not we ourselves. We didn't create ourselves, right? God is the one who who made us, and not only made us, but blessed us with every kind of blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And when we recognize that, then every every rich every riches that we have is from Him. Um, <clears throat> and so this is the pearl of great price. That the, so the, the main issue with this man today is not that he fell short of, of the glory of God. I think it was that his focus was in the wrong place. Um, as the Lord says in the parable in Matthew 13, uh, the pearl of great price, he says, The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he has found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Right? So the focus of this man was on what God was asking him to give up rather than what God was planning to offer him. We'll say that again. Um, the problem with the man is that he was focused on what God was asking him to give up in, in, instead of focusing on what God was offering him when he gave it up. And so um, he looked too much at what he needed um, to do instead of God, what God was planning to do for him. Right? When we focus on God's grace and his riches and his kingdom and all that he wants to give to us, then we willingly leave everything because we see them as um, nothing uh, of value compared to what he is offering us. <clears throat> um, and so we need to cut off abruptly and drastically, especially at first, that one thing that we lack. And, and if we can't, we, we need to learn not to overly trust in those things. Um, and so, like Caesarius of Arles says, um, early, uh, church father, he says, if you're unwilling to commit to full obedience, do what you can. So some person would say, okay, I'm not able to, to give 100%. Okay, give 10%. I'm not able to um, uh, fast all of this. Okay, fast what you can fast, but be honest and faithful. Speak to your father of confession and start. I'm not able to read this much. Okay, but read. I'm not able to pray this much, but you have to pray. So we, we all need to start somewhere. And then when God gives us more grace, um, instead of making excuses, we do more. 
Um, <clears throat> and so he gave us, and he asked us to give a portion of what we had received. Um, and instead of getting to the point where this thing is going to cause conflict between me and, and God, um, we try to use it in order to help us to get closer to God rather than further, right? Um, so I'll try to emphasize this with, with another uh, story. Um, maybe I've said it before, but well, one day there was a little girl um, who saw a plastic pearl necklace in, in the uh, store, and she fell in love with, with it, and she wanted it. And her parents said, okay, you have raise money from, from what we have given you, um, and then you can purchase it. And so after a considerable amount of time, she got the money, and she, and she, she purchased it, and she would wear it every day. And every night, the father would come and say, I love you very much. She said, I love you too, Daddy. And then he said, but can you give me your necklace? He said, no, I love you very much, um, but I also care about this. Uh, I'm not, I, I, I can't give it to you right now. He said, okay, um, just remember that I love you. <clears throat> and every night, he would say the same thing, and she would say the same thing. Um, until one night, um, he came to her, and uh, she had tears in her eyes, and she said, um, I love you, and I don't, I, I love this thing too, but if you want it, I'll give it, I'll give it to you. So she handed it over to him. <clears throat> and um, he was so proud of her, and he encouraged her, and he thanked her for, for, for giving her back the gift that she had, that she, he had given her in a sense. Um, and then after he took the plastic necklace, he went into his pocket and he gave her a real pearl necklace um, for her to, uh, she wore it on her wedding day and all that kind of stuff. But the idea here is when God asks us for something, it's nothing in his eyes, but it's so much in our eyes. He wants us to open our eyes to the real treasure, not the thing in our hand that we think is a treasure, because it's not. Um, and so it's not because he wants it, but he wants us to, to understand where the true riches are. are. And sometimes when we're unwilling to give something, that's because we feel that this thing has treasure and power when it doesn't in comparison to God. <clears throat> so I need to be willing to drop everything and anything for the Lord when he calls me. Um, and I need to trust that he has much more to offer than what I think I already have. Um, and uh, if the Lord, this is a hard question, for, for all of us, but if the Lord came to us today and said, I need you to come with me right now, what would your answer be? Uh, no, I still need to do this. I need to finish this. I need to stay with my loved ones more. I need, okay, he understands all of these things, but then the question is, but what about me? <laughs> I want to be with you too, um, and I want you to be with me. So we have to have the willingness at least as a goal in our in our heart to say, all of those other things are nice, but God is even better. And if He calls me, I should be willing to accept uh, wholeheartedly. And I should I should count the days until uh, He He allows me to come with Him. <clears throat> so this is this is the pearl of great price that we have to refix in our minds and our hearts every day, so that our lives change now, not just later. And glory be to him, I'm going to the Blessed.